Welcome to episode 245 of Build Your House Yourself University by Hi You. I'm your host and fellow student, Michelle Nelson, and together we'll learn the basics of home design and construction and demystify the building process so we can make smart decisions and build quality dream homes with or without a general contractor. Well, as you may be able to hear, I am still wrestling with my recording equipment. I think I have found the problem though. I need a new microphone. I think my recorder and my cords are okay, but I will be ordering a new microphone this week. So hopefully by the next episode, I will sound as crystal clear as I have been over the years. But let's get on to this episode. I hope you guys have had a great Christmas and I'm wishing you a happy new year. I want to sincerely thank you for continuing to listen and share this podcast. I realize that there's a ton of content out there and I'm grateful that you take the time out of your schedule to support Bai Hai Yu. An extra thank you goes to those of you who have given positive feedback to me either through emails or reviews. And to those of you who've shared your favorite episodes through text, email, and on your social media platforms, it's so helpful when you become an ambassador for the show and encourage others to listen. I appreciate you so much for that, more than you probably know. Okay, so this week's show was published a few years ago, and it contains information that's still relevant today. Since 99% of us have some degree of budgetary limitations during our builds, we'll have to decide where to save and where to splurge. This show gives you some suggestions, so let's get right into it. Most of us have to consider budget when making decisions about our dream homes, and some budgets are tighter than others. So in this week's episode, I'll give you some tips on the best places to save when building a house versus areas where you should splurge. Before we get to our tips, let's define a pro term, value engineering. Value engineering is a term that you might hear some architects and contractors use when talking about saving money when building a house. Value engineering is an economical way of building that removes excessive costs, but preserves good design. In other words, value engineering aims to lower the cost of building without lowering functionality. That's achieved by spending in some places and saving in others. So our tips this week will focus on value engineering. Let's get right to it. According to money.com, your house should cost no more than two and a half times your gross annual salary. So for a household with an income of $100,000, a home should cost no more than $250,000. I think those numbers assume that you're taking out a typical mortgage with a 10 to 20% down payment. If you're paying cash for your house or if you're making a significantly higher down payment, your target number can probably be higher. Okay, with that in mind, let's start talking about where you should splurge, where you should spend your money and make as few compromises as possible when building your home. The basic rule of thumb is to splurge on the more permanent parts of the home that are difficult to change. So the structural parts of the house, including the foundation, the framing, and even the windows. As far as the foundation goes, no matter what type of foundation you choose, you'll want to splurge on hiring an experienced foundation contractor and use good quality materials. Where you can save is by choosing a slab foundation over a crawl space or over a basement foundation, if possible. The same with framing. Pay a little bit more for an experienced framing carpenter. And if possible, use 2x6 dimensional lumber instead of 2x4s. Not only will that give you a sturdier house, but houses framed with 2x6 lumber have thicker walls so you can add more insulation. Speaking of insulation, you should splurge there too. Try to achieve the highest R value you can afford. Not that adding insulation to your house in the future is not possible. It is, but you'll be losing money in utility costs each month if you don't have an adequately insulated house from the start. Shoot for at least Energy Star standards if you can. I'll have a link in the show notes to a chart showing what R values are recommended by the Energy Star program. 
Where you can save on insulation is with the type of insulation you choose. You can get to any R value using most types of insulation, as long as your wall and roof cavities are thick enough to hold the required amount of insulation material. One of the main advantages of expensive spray foam insulation is that less insulation is needed to achieve a high R value. Closed cell spray foam insulation has an R value of 6.5 per inch, while high performance fiberglass bats have an R value of only 4.3 per inch. So it obviously takes more insulation and therefore thicker wall cavities to insulate adequately with fiberglass. The bottom line is you can achieve a well-insulated wall, let's say an R38 wall, with either expensive closed cell spray foam insulation, which is considered a premium, or you could use more affordable cellulose insulation, or even very affordable fiberglass bats. To save money, your goal should be an R value goal, not an insulation material goal. If you can afford enough cellulose insulation to get to an R38 wall, but you can only afford enough spray foam insulation to get to an R30 wall, choose the more budget-friendly cellulose insulation so you can achieve a higher R value. Not only will you save money month to month, but you'll also have a more comfortable house. The same is true with windows. Spending the money upfront on good quality windows will save you significantly in your utility bills. Plus, you'll be more comfortable in your house. And you don't have to buy expensive brand name windows, but you should strongly consider Energy Star double pane windows, no matter the brand. Really try to avoid single pane windows. And if at all possible, splurge on low E windows. Okay, pop quiz. Do you remember what low E stands for and what a low E coating does? Low E stands for low emissivity. The low E coating is a very thin metallic coating added to some windows that keeps heat inside the house in cold climates, and that coating keeps heat out of the house in hot climates. To learn more about the low E coating and other energy efficient window features, take a listen to episode 42. I'll link to it in the show notes. Another splurge? A continuous load path system. If you live in a storm prone or earthquake prone area, you'll probably want to splurge on that extra structural stability of connecting your framing elements together with a continuous load path. Simpson Strong Tie manufactures a collection of fasteners and bolts that tie all the major parts of the house together, from the roof to the foundation. That continuous connection makes the house stronger and less likely to be damaged during a storm. In some regions, those continuous load path elements are required by code. You may have heard them referred to as hurricane ties, but even if they're not required by code in your area, a continuous load path is a great splurge if high winds or earthquakes are common where you're planning to build. The next splurge, your HVAC system. Buy the best heating, ventilation, and air conditioning system that you can afford and spend the money to get a proper manual J calculation, which will objectively tell you the appropriate size for your system. Go a step further and get a blower door test to ensure that your house and ductwork are properly sealed. Even if you decide the blower door test is not worth the money, pay for the manual J to ensure that the HVAC contractor is not selling you an oversized system. An oversized system will cost you more upfront and in the long run because it won't be as efficient as a properly sized HVAC system. Now let's talk about the roof. You should splurge on good quality framing elements for the roof, like the roof trusses or the roof sheathing, but you can save with the roof cladding. You can choose architectural asphalt shingles instead of metal, composite, tile, or slate roofing. Most homes in the U.S. are built with architectural shingles, which are pretty affordable. But avoid cheap three-tab asphalt shingles, which are less weighty and less durable than architectural shingles. Finally, splurge on labor. You don't have to choose the most expensive subcontractors, but spending a little more for experienced, licensed, and insured, well-respected tradespeople is worth the money. 
the workmanship in and on your home will most likely be better. According to bankrate.com, up to half of your budget should go towards labor. They say carpenters and stonemasons earn approximately $70 per hour. Electricians earn up to $85 per hour. Plumbers earn up to $65 per hour and painters up to $35 per hour. Of course, those numbers will vary depending on where you live. Tell those experienced subcontractors during construction your plans for future improvements. It's cheaper to have the shell of future rooms constructed when your house is being built as compared to having subs come back for future improvements. You can have certain spaces like bonus rooms and basements constructed but left unfinished. Splurge on having those spaces framed and insulated and have subs run electrical, plumbing, and gas lines that you'll need in the future. Think through what you'll want in a few years down the road. And even if you can't afford to get everything done completely while you're building your house, you'll want to communicate with your subs what you'll want in the future. Also think through plans for future security systems, surround sound systems, hot tubs, and gas grills. Splurge on having a conduit run inside the house from the foundation to the attic, plus along the driveway. A conduit is just hollow tubing. Sometimes even simple PVC piping can be used as a conduit. Future plumbing and wiring can be easily run through the conduit. By the way, the addition of a conduit is a good idea even if you plan on having your entire house completely finished, just in case in the future you might want to make some changes. All right, so you want to splurge on structural elements and those things that will improve your home's overall energy efficiency. Let's talk about where you can save. You can save on finishes and things that can be upgraded fairly easily after you move in. Think about things that people typically replace when they remodel. Things like cabinets, countertops, flooring, backsplashes, faucets, cabinet hardware, lighting fixtures, shower doors, sinks, and appliances. Those are the things you can save on up front because they're not permanent and can be pretty easily replaced after the home is constructed. Flooring, for example. Save by installing engineered wood, laminate, or wood look tile or luxury vinyl flooring instead of solid hardwood. Or put hardwood in the living areas, but carpeting in the bedrooms. Here are some other ways to save. Use ceramic or porcelain tile instead of natural stone on showers, floors, and backsplashes. Forgo custom or even semi-custom cabinets and order stock cabinets from a big box store or Ikea. There are even companies that will make custom doors for Ikea cabinet frames if you want to spend a little bit more. Go for laminate countertops instead of expensive natural stone or quartz. Remember, they can always be changed out. Or look in your stone yard for cheaper remnant pieces of stone. Remnants are smaller pieces of stone that are left over from cutting down slabs on previous jobs. Buy medium-grade Energy Star appliances instead of expensive professional-grade appliances. Specifically, choose a range with fewer burners or a fridge with a freezer on the top instead of a fancy French door fridge. And don't forget to check for discounted floor samples and scratch-and-dent appliances. Go for 8- or 9-foot ceilings instead of more expensive 10-foot ceilings but be sure you'll be okay with that forever because increasing a ceiling height is super expensive and it is a structural change. Select less expensive hollow core interior doors instead of solid wood interior doors. Hollow core doors won't reduce sound transmission as well as solid doors, but they're a great option if you're trying to cut costs. Save by having your painter stick with one main color in your home. Of course, trim can be another color, but if you stay with one color for the walls, you'll save money. Many painters charge more for each color you choose. Alternatively, you could paint a couple of rooms or accent walls with different colors yourself. And to save even more, use good quality, but not premium quality paint. Save by using limited, simple trim and molding. You can always add more later. And choose Energy Star conventional water heaters instead of 
more expensive tankless water heaters. Tankless models cost several hundred to a thousand dollars more, and they require yearly maintenance. Although tankless units are more energy efficient, it may take up to 20 years to recoup that energy bill savings. If you like the idea of a tankless unit because of the endless hot water, you can put one tankless water heater in your master bathroom and use a conventional water heater for the rest of the house. Episode 32 talks more about water heaters. Look in the show notes for the link. Okay, what else? Rather than spending money on built-in shelving, purchase freestanding shelves and storage. Save by purchasing less expensive faucets, cabinet hardware, and lighting fixtures. You can buy them online or in big box stores. Budget-friendly lighting fixtures are fine, but go ahead and splurge on super energy-efficient LED light bulbs. They are more expensive than traditional incandescent light bulbs, but they can last up to 10 years. Even some of the cheapest LED light bulbs claim to have a 10-year lifespan, depending on usage. Some of the most affordable LED light bulbs on the market are sold by Philips, and they cost about $2. As LED bulbs become more standard in homes, the price will probably drop even more. Another way to splurge a little and save a little is to choose high-end materials selectively in your house. Maybe splurge in the kitchen, living room, and master bedroom and bath, and then use lower-grade materials and finishes in the other parts of the house. Wherever you decide to splurge or save, think it through and plan it out. Pick as many materials as possible before you start the project, so you have a clear idea of what your finished house will cost, and so you'll avoid costly change orders. It's not what most people do, and it's not what most people want to do because most of us want to start building as soon as possible. But having a detailed plan in place before you break ground will make the construction phase easier, faster, and less stressful. Remember the advice that the electrician gave me a few weeks ago? Plan everything out and stick with the plan. So in summary, splurge on more permanent structural items and items that will improve your home's energy efficiency. Save on finishes and fixtures that are easier to replace. Things that are commonly changed in remodeling projects. Well, that's all I have for this week. I hope that helped. And I hope you'll come back next week for another episode of Build Your House Yourself University. Bye, hi, you. Please remember that the purpose of this podcast is simply to educate and inform. It's not a substitute for professional advice. The information that you hear is based only on the opinions, research, and experiences of my guests and myself. That information might be incomplete, it's subject to change, and it may not apply to your project. In addition, building codes and requirements vary from region to region, so always consult a professional about specific recommendations for your home.